Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater, and in this video, it's time to talk about another hitchhiker, but this time it's a plant. I'm talking about the bladderwort or UG, others call it Giba, and it is this plant right here that has stuck itself to my filter. And I was in the middle of getting rid of it. I got it all out of all the plants and everything from this tank. However, we still have some stuck on the filter. And I decided that instead of removing it all, I'd let it grow out a little bit so I could show you guys what exactly it is on film and not have to explain it by showing other people's pictures before I got rid of it all. So now I do consider Giba to be a pest plant mainly because it is a carnivorous plant. It does kind of get annoying and it grows kind of crazy and not unified and doesn't look, really look good in any scapes. However, the main reason is because just like a Venus flytrap or a pitcher plant, it does get the majority of its nutrition by consuming live animals. In this case, it would be seed shrimp or baby shrimp, like newborns the first week before they molt are the most susceptible to being uh, eaten by the bladders. However, uh, in this case, it's not that bad. I only have a few pieces, but if it was really thick and like an adult shrimp would be trying to get through it, I have seen where an adult shrimp uh, leg got stuck in a bladder and it kind of acted like it got tased and um, jumping all around until it got free. And in that tank, I did notice where my buried females weren't really getting buried uh, as much in that tank as they were in other tanks where they don't have any Giba present. So this, between that and the fact that it will eat some of the babies, that is why I consider it a pest plant. It is also just very tedious in trying to remove it out of scape tanks or make it look good. It is kind of sought out for in like the carnivorous world because uh, a lot of people will collect every single type, just like me with shrimp, I gotta catch them all, so I got every single variety I can get my hands on that are homebred. There are people out there that have every single variety of carnivorous plant, and this is one of them. There are several different varieties of bladderwort out there. There's a lot in our local streams and rivers and ponds and stuff in Florida. However, this is the one that I see the most common throughout the hobby, and it just grows really easily in most tanks that are healthy. Uh, especially shrimp tanks because in most healthy shrimp tanks there's a good population of seed shrimp with no fish in the tank to take care of that. The giba kind of thrives off of the seed shrimp and, and really grows uh, uncontrollably. So I really try to get ahead of it as fast as I possibly can. I've gotten it out of other tanks and it's really a pain when it can get into some of the stem plants and mosses and stuff like that. On a lot of cases, you just gotta call it a wash and like trim the plant all the way down to the roots or in the moss, you gotta throw it all out. Um, it kind of sucks, but it is needed to fully eradicate it out of some tanks. However, in this tank, I was able to just slowly pull pieces out and you gotta do it very, very slowly and carefully because any tiny little bits and pieces that break off or get left behind will start whole new plants and you'll have to start all over again. And this tank on the filter, I tried like three or four times to fully get it out of the filter before I was like, all right, let's let it grow out so I can do a video on it. But every single time I completely get any visible signs of the Giba out, but then two weeks later, a little tiny piece will be growing out of the filter again. Either some roots got left behind or when I broke off, a piece kind of went into the flow of the tank and then came back and stuck on the filter. So it is doable. The easiest solution, the most, like, I, I don't know, obvious one would be to just remove the filter and replace that, but I am going to replace all these tanks on top of the refrigerator with 10 gallons so I can work with more different varieties and kind of reducing a lot of my bigger tanks for 10 gallons for that reason, and these are going to be one of them, so uh, this tank won't be here much longer anyways, so I'll remove this Giba just to show you guys on video but it's the last of it i might grow it in a little container and keep it for a uh, carnivorous bog that i might do in the future but other than that it has no purpose in our shrimp tanks and it is truly a pest that you should get rid of and definitely check all of your plants when they come in to make sure that it doesn't have any of this in it it's really hard sometimes you have quarantine tanks um, shrimp for tanks a lot of times you should quarantine plants just for this reason as well as you know snail eggs and 
the possible dragonfly larvae and stuff like that. So this isn't something that you can kill like that other stuff where you can use no planaria. This won't die with any chemicals. The only way to get this out of your tank is going to be by manually removing it. It is tedious, but it is possible. Stay on top of it. And just like the scoods, you'll be able to get them out of your tank. So I got my tweezers as well as a net because I'm going to be very tedious with this. If I see any pieces swimming away or anything like that, I'll scoop it up with the net. Very, very fine mesh so I can make sure I get all of it out and just going very, very slow here. First off, I'll grab this nice big piece here. Let's see if we can't get a good zoom up picture on the wart, the bladder wart. You can see just that little tiny pocket right there is a little tiny bladder and the shrimp will get stuck in that. It's got to be a really, really tiny shrimp like I said. However, the newborn shrimp are small enough that it will indeed get eaten by the bladder wart. So we're going to get it out as much as possible. So I got it all out now. It was a little hard with the tweezers to get some of the little tiny smaller bits. So I had to use my fingers to get a good grip on them. And then I kind of dug out some of the filter to get the roots off of some others. But if you are looking to have the highest possible baby survival rate, then you're gonna wanna get this Giba out as well as any of the other pests I've mentioned in previous videos, like the Scoods or the Planaria. This will just help you to be the best shrimp breeder possible. So as always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time.